Welcome back to another episode of So Glad We're Friends. I'm Maggie. I'm Devin. I'm Brittany. And this is Rosie. <laughs> <laughs> we did a Pilates class, our very first reformer Pilates class. I'm feeling a little low energy. A year later, we finally achieved our goal. <laughs> That's so and, crazy. But it's the beginning of 2024, so like, what a great way to like start it yeah. with one of the goals that we were so afraid of doing. It you know? is, yeah. When you pictured it in your mind, would you say it was like harder, or easier than you thought it would be, and harder. scarier or less scary? I think like the movements were harder, yeah, like the exercises. But it was easy to kind of understand the like reformer machine, which was what was yeah. intimidating yeah. to me. Yeah, same. Yeah, it was definitely easy to understand. It was just like a hard workout. Yeah. And she definitely did a, she went in on the legs. And she spoke very quickly. Though it was just like, rem- like I had to keep looking at everyone to see yeah, which leg was placed on the yeah. solid block versus the thing not moving yes. versus the one moving. I'm like, okay, or is this correct? <laughs> For sure. But yeah. I was really happy to do it with you guys because I think if I was like by myself, I would have been so much more in my head. Like, oh my God, I'm not able to do this move or like I yeah. have to pause or like this isn't right. Me and yeah, I just felt like better. looking at each other like, oh, fuck, <laughs> this is hard. <laughs> but then they, what song was it? Um, Pass, Pass That, that Dush by Missy Pass Elliott. That Dush. And then we were hyped for a little bit. Yeah. yeah. For like three minutes. It was good. It was good music. I think the playlist was definitely. Yeah, she had some good songs. Mood some boosters. Bangers. Do they fully just get to pick whatever music they want? I, I feel like so. most of them do. Yeah. Just like that would be so on. fun. I feel like I'd be so, I always like feel so much pressure when it comes to music. Like, uh-huh. are people going to like it? Are they going to not vibe to it? Like, are they going to think this is stupid? Yeah. I don't know why I feel so much pressure about that for me. I music. do too. Like, like when I'm the driver in my car oh, and I'm with people that, that like, even when I'm with Lexi, my sister and I'm driving, I'm like, uh, I, I have to make the decision to not care what she thinks. But yeah. I'm you just play whatever like, you want. I hope she likes the song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's cute. Is she annoyed that I'm only playing Taylor Swift, you know, like. I feel that. But um, with workout classes, I always build them up so much more in my head than they actually are. Like, I'm yeah. afraid that I'm not going to be able to keep up in classes or like it's going to feel like forever long, mm-hmm. things like that. But I had to take a lot of breaks yeah. in this class. And oh, it was fine. Yeah. Like, I could just sit, yeah. like, nobody is like, oh, she's not. <laughs> like, that's what I there. literally think, too. And I feel like so many people, like, I was truly so much more concerned about, like, what I was doing mm-hmm. than, like, what mm-hmm. anyone, like, the only reason I was looking at other people was to make sure I was, like, doing True, the right yeah. move. Like, you weren't, like, we were yeah. judging other people. So, no. yeah. But that's very true. And it's like you feel like everybody just knows what they're doing. But like literally we walked in and Britt's like, all three of us have never done this before. <laughs> so like we need some yeah. information. And then when she showed us, it was like comfortable. Yeah. I think she did a good job of encouraging everyone in the class too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like when she called us out, I was like, yeah. I know. I love when she called you out. I was like, oh, slay. It's like, okay. She okay, was I'll like, let's go harder. for it. <laughs> I was like, I'll go more. <laughs> or when she'd be like, if you're shaking, that's a good thing. Or, you know, she yeah. didn't say that exactly. I was like, Is she just talking she about me? Dude, I was just calling I me out. Say, she's like, love to see those shakes. I was, I was like, like, okay, no. girly. <laughs> Don't call me out like that. Everybody was probably shaking. I literally, yeah. There was like multiple times where my legs were like, shaking uh-huh. uncontrollably like, like it was like the balance of it yeah the was balance so was like, I'm that was really and hard this part is moving that was the hardest that was part the hardest. with the weight like i couldn't balance at the same time as doing the weight at all yeah and she put both of our things up she's like you guys can have those up yeah i was like yes please <laughs> oh she left my she put your guys's up and then she's like do you need your yours up and i was like i don't know and she's like no you don't you got this <laughs> Yeah, I got this. Yeah, no, I needed that shit. No, I, was like, I needed to up. hold on to something. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, even if I'm just like barely touching it, I was like, <laughs> yeah, I do not want to eat shit because like my because it was like that move where you're like st- standing on one leg and like mm-hmm. bending over. Yeah, and I was like, I could literally see myself just like exactly. Face, you know? I like kind of just wanted it up in case I fell forward, but yeah, yeah, and we're also on our period, so oh my god, yeah, yeah. all three of us. That was not fun. I was, but so honestly, afraid. I didn't have cramps during it or anything. I didn't I until either. we got to the coffee shop. My yeah, cramps haven't been bad. Yours were bad nice yesterday. Altitude. I think maybe it might be the altitude. Um, they were <laughs> bad yesterday, but usually <laughs> like, is I that have a thing? Them. I'm literally just saying. That. <laughs> um. Well, one time I started my period and then right away got on an airplane and I had no cramps at all and I was like it had to have been because of the altitude really? of the flight because I usually have. That's interesting. Cramps. But yeah, they were hurting yesterday. 
Yeah. I'm just on like a little ibuprofen drip. <laughs> <laughs> just making sure I don't feel That's anything. So funny. That's okay though. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you guys, last time we did an advice episode, you guys really asked so many great questions and you brought so many good advice things to the table. So we're going to continue that today. If you need to leave us any question, you can submit it in our Google form, which you can find in our Instagram or in our Facebook community. And it's completely anonymous. Yeah, it's yeah. fully anonymous. So say whatever you'd like. Mm-hmm. Well, don't say anything mean. Yeah, Don't, don't bully anything. us. But <laughs> um, Field biologist. I am at a job that I'm unhappy at, but for the field, I get paid really well. And I just interviewed for a job that sounds amazing and I have a good feeling about, but... I was, I was take, I would take an almost 10 K pay cut. Do I stay at my current job? I have student loans, but I value my happiness more, but money and benefits are also great. Help 31 years old. I love your pod. It helps me get through the tough work days. Oh, that's so cute. I didn't see that part. Oh, um, I want to know if it's just 10 K salary pay cut or like if you're also losing benefits and stuff. Cause like that's, that's what I was true. Say, so that makes it Cause she did mention benefits mm-hmm. after I would also say negotiate. Um, yeah. Cause isn't that a thing? A if you go in saying this was my job, I was getting paid this. Like, can you guys match that? Or is that weird to do? We could definitely do that. But I would also just like ask for more money. Just, like you ask for like 20 K 30 K more when you're doing that in a real, not a real job when you're doing that in a (laughs) standard work environment (laughs) do you uh, like give reasoning behind it like and the way you would in a pitch with a brand like do you say like i deserve to be paid this because of this it's good to have like some information to back it up but i also think that you can like just ask for it and like they expect you to ask for yeah like more yeah they're like they're going lower lower and seeing what you're going to accept Wow. So, but then you can also like say you can't negotiate the salary. Definitely negotiate the benefits. Like, what if you mm-hmm. can get more paid time off? You yeah. could like get a better match for your four hundred one k or mm-hmm. better health insurance. Or, yeah, I don't know. There's so many different health benefits now that like companies offer that it's definitely worth it to. Yeah. Also, she that. said she's making. Uh, what was the wording of her salary? Now she's paid really well now. So I would assume. Like in my mind, I would say over a hundred grand, I guess, in my head is what I would imagine based on that. And then when you think about it, is cutting ten grand off of a hundred and thirty or off of one hundred twenty, yeah, one hundred ten that, that much makes of a difference? That big of a difference on each paycheck, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. But if they're if they're trying to pay off student loans and stuff, that's yeah. a nice chunk for sure. to take out of your student loans for the year. For sure. But I also think too, like doing your due diligence on the other job. Like, mm-hmm. I I think it's good to just like have references and talk to different people i that's something that like truly have you guys ever done that like ask to talk to other people at the company no i think that's something that like i didn't realize you could do and then i used to have people get referenced to me all the time like they're like Mm. hey can you like this person wants to like talk to somebody about the job like can you talk to them it happened probably like at least a few times a month at my old job so i definitely asked for that and just kind of get their opinions and like references and stuff like that So, like, you're literally doing the interview, too, because if this is kind of, like, a big deal where you're, like, okay, I don't necessarily know if I want to make this decision. It's good to have more information. Yeah. But I do think that happiness over money is, if you're miserable in that job, your current job, then it's not worth it. No. For sure. Your student loans will be paid eventually. Like, you're. Yeah. Yeah. Because it could even be, like, this job like the job that you're interviewing for that you're really excited about or it could be another job so like your mindset could just be like maybe there's just another job out there for you that's like just a better all-around situation but it sounds good if she's having like good vibes and yeah feelings about it because that would also suck if then you do switch and then you're like wait i hate this too which is always possible because everything still work yeah yeah i feel that um, Follow your heart. <laughs> what was I gonna say? Um, this one's interesting. How do you win someone back that you truly believe is your soulmate? We dated for almost two years and talked well, about getting married and living together. 
but you broke up with me over text twice. She? Who, did it say yeah. gender? Um, no. But she broke up with me over text. Yeah, Twice. Twice. It sounds like the person doing the breaking up has some problems that they need to work through. If you're yeah. breaking up with someone that you have... I mean, you're in a relationship with as an adult over text. Yeah, no, but it's like very avoidant personality yeah. type. Yeah, thing. I would also want to know how long ago you broke up that you now want to get back together because mm -hmm. maybe if this was a more recent thing, you're probably just still very much in like a heartbreak. Yeah, um, point in life, and like it just will take time for you to be like, oh, I was really wrong about that. She is not my soulmate. Yeah, and then you'll meet somebody else and be like, oh, maybe this is. For sure. You could just like give it more time and both of you like take space, go to therapy, like yeah, just reflect on the relationship. And then if you if you still really feel like it's not the right, it's like your person. Because I also think like, I feel like I've talked about getting married to people that like I've been in long term relationships with. I've said like, I wanted to marry every living, single yeah. person I've ever liked in my life. Like, yeah. But with like enough time and space, like the previous relationships, I'm like. Okay. You're like, <laughs> but I have <laughs> Whoa. the one thing that I'm like just giving it more time and space. Like I know like a handful of people that have gotten to back together like after time, like years apart, like five years apart. I mean, my stepdad and my mom got back together after like 20 plus years. <laughs> so it's really? possible. Yeah, they were high school sweethearts. So they yeah. got back together. But it Wait, sounds like so years cute. Later. <laughs> it's really cute. It's so cute. They have like pictures from like Halloween and like they go to weddings together and stuff. Oh my god really cute. And their they were married outfit. first no my mom broke up with him that's so fucking cute that's pretty crazy but what do you do if like like if he or this person thinks like if the girl isn't reciprocating it I, it, you don't want to just keep putting yeah, it all into that and like it. hoping yeah, it because that's no. not good for you there's to someone be better out there it. yeah for yeah. sure you shouldn't try and like convince somebody. Yeah, like because the, the right person won't need convincing. Yeah, at all. Yeah. Um. That's actually so crazy. My friend, one of my best friends, she was. We were just talking about this, so I don't think she'd care if I share. Um, she was fully dating this other boy last February at this time and Cameron met him when they went to the golf open thing and they were like talking about moving to another city and everything and he was kind of like iffy about that like he wasn't putting his all into the relationship at all and not giving her what she deserves and treating mm -hmm. her the right way and she's so loving like she's the most kind loving like puts her all into everything into every relationship and he just wasn't giving her that at all and all of us were like this just feels like it's wrong because I feel like when you're with the right person, they will like fully reciprocate it yeah. in the way that you want them to. Yeah. Cut to now, girlie's getting married in a few months to somebody else. Yeah, there yeah. you go. I and mean, he fully was on the same page in every aspect. Yeah. Like, yeah, immediately. if you stay clinging on to this relationship, then it's going to prevent you from moving on to finding the right person or For a better sure. person or someone who treats you the way you want to be treated. Yeah. People stay or get back together with someone like all way too often because it's the comfortable thing to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like you don't want to start all, all over again and like start dating again. And like I know it's overwhelming, but yeah, why keep getting it's back with it. someone that's like not the right person for you? Yeah. yeah. Um, how to be confident about being alcohol fee free for dry January or even six months to a whole year? Everyone is so judgy and automatically assumes you're pregnant or have a problem, even if you're just sober curious. I love this question. Yeah, that's great. I think there's so many different aspects to this just because I've been drinking so much less for like the last year. And I think like kind of like having an internal dialogue with yourself of like why you're doing it and like what it's for is so helpful to kind of like keep reminding yourself about it mm -hmm. um but just like the like your delivery and the confidence with it if you're just like i'm not drinking and you're just confident about it then i think a lot more people are like less likely to be like why or like oh you should just have one drink yeah. or like what you know what's wrong with you or like you're not fun 
Yeah. Literally earlier today. <laughs> Literally <laughs> earlier today. <laughs> Devin's like, you're so not fun. <laughs> Brittany's like, I, we were saying, should we lift tonight or are we going to drink? And she's like, oh, I'll probably only have one or two. And Devin's like, you're not fun. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's also about the um, like environment and types of places that yeah. you're hanging out. Because like when you're the one sober person in a bar full of really drunk people, as the sober person, you're looking at it like, this is horrible. Like, is yeah. this what I'm like when I'm drunk? Is this what I'm experiencing? And for those drunk people, they're just looking at you like, oh, they're not having fun. They're just sitting there, whatever, because they're so drunk and just like mm -hmm. in a fully different state of mind. Where like, I feel like doing other activities or things with people where maybe they're just having like one drink, even if you're not drinking, but they're just having one or two. Yeah. It's a more like even playing field. Yeah. yeah that's changing really the, point. your lifestyle. Yeah. And also, there are so many fun drinks now, like yeah. non-alcoholic wine and beer and like mocktails. and So many places have full like mocktail menus yeah. now. I've noticed yeah. that too. And they have like how recess has like adaptogen and like magnesium and stuff. That, and there's like Kin Euphoric and like there's a bunch of different drink brands that make mm -hmm. drinks that are supposed to kind of make you feel happy and chill. Yeah. But it's not alcohol. And also, if you are at a bar or something, having a drink in your hand yeah. will make nobody's going to be like, are you not drinking tonight? Yeah, if you have a drink sure. that looks like a drink. Yeah. I also think, too, like if you're comfortable enough with people, like whoever you're going out with, if you just tell them like, hey, I'm like trying not drinking right now, then yeah. it's like a much different conversation because then no one like brings it up like when you're going out. They're like they already know that you're not drinking. Is, so you yeah. can like just text them ahead of time and be like, hey, I'm not drinking right now. Mm -hmm. And it's like no big deal. And it really it shouldn't change any like friendship or no. If it does, then like <laughs> yeah. that's not something to do with them. Not yeah, you. that's not your problem. I also think like easing into situations too, like doing like you know having things at home mm -hmm. and like just doing things with small groups of people, and then like expanding it because I definitely like I'm very fine in most situations except for when I like go out to something where it's like a like an event that you're supposed oh, to be really doing at. yeah. Yeah, that makes it's still sense, just like it's an awkward, pressure. Yeah, not even like pressure, but it's just kind of like assumed, mm -hmm. you yeah. know. But the more I practice, the more I do it, like the easier it gets, the better it feels. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. It's also kind of what we talk about of like how as adults we have so much less of that like silliness and hyperness and playing around mm -hmm. that like we now only have when we're drinking more. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I feel like the people that i know or even online like jc and stuff who don't drink and kind of never did mm -hmm. they still maintained that part of their personality yeah. which i think is like so cool oh i didn't really think about that i love that yeah like so i feel like st stopping drinking kind of like will help you be able to act like that because that's what people mean when sober. they say you're not having fun like that's what they mean yeah. like you're just sitting there kind of yeah yeah, I feel like you should, it's, that's something to, that's kind of hard too, is if people are like really trying to get like fucked up and stupid. Yeah, and you're like, ew, like it's you're not just fun like, to I'm be not, like I don't that. really want to do that and I don't want to be like that. No. But I don't know. I think it's hard. So like, I miss being like that. Like I, I want to be know. like hyper and like. Yeah. yeah. Um, Need some free or low cost ideas for the weekends. I find myself just eating and reading, but really want to do more things hard with such a small quote-unquote fun budget i love arts and crafts yeah. <laughs> it's my favorite i bought like a pack of canvases probably like two years ago that we've had and like whenever we're just bored or something like you just pull out a little canvas once you have paint then you have yeah. it like yeah. it's kind of investing into those types of things once like your color your markers yeah, and stuff yeah. like then you're set yeah, and I love, like, taking my markers to the park and, like, getting outside. And you can bring, like, a little snack and, like, just hang out. That's what's so outside. hard for me in the winter. Like, because yeah. it, it's, like, being able to go outside is such an easy free thing where there's, yeah. like, so many things that you can do outside for free. But in the winter, it's, like, no. Uh, if you're in Colorado, go skiing. True. It's expensive. Yeah, <laughs> but once you buy your lift ticket, or your <laughs> once you pass, have your skis and your thousands of dollars <laughs> ski pass, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah, honestly, there's not that much free things. I mean, that's why I like being in a homebody because I can just like try new crafts. Or I love um, Netflix has games. What? Oh. 
they have games like uh, they have an app i don't know if it's like a separate app or if it's within the regular netflix app I've but they do them that. based on the shows so like there's some really fun ones where it's like murder mystery and like you get to be an fbi agent and God. like like solve cases and stuff and it's really fun and that's totally free it's like just in the you if you have netflix, netflix already yeah. <laughs> or that use your parents fun. but i love like video games and stuff like sometimes i'll look up like like from elementary school and stuff like fun brain and yeah cool math and like sims. i also think sims, that there sims. are quite a few like facebook groups or like newsletters and stuff that have like free things to do like in your area the library has free things to do i just yeah. saw someone that i follow on tiktok who did a sewing class at the library or something oh my God, that's which so is fun. free yeah whoa i don't know they had classes that mm-hmm. would be so cool yeah that would be really cool because there's always like just new events and like pop up things that happen. Yeah, or like check out the farmers market again. It's an outside thing, but like yeah. you know, like things. Yeah, I love. I always go to the Facebook events page. Do you do that? Of like, yeah. what's happening what's this weekend on? or yeah. this week? And there's just like random newsletters or like city accounts and stuff that have, you know, they will like post the events and stuff that are happening for the weekend. Mm-hmm. So it could be like live music somewhere that's like free or mm-hmm. just cheaper. Get a dog if you have yeah. one. I'm like thinking that's like all my yeah. activity. Yeah. Um, definitely not free. No. <laughs> but yeah, once you have expensive. it. How do you deal with being ghosted by someone you thought you had a great connection with? It's driving me insane and I want to reach out, but I know it's a bad idea. That's horrible. Uh, that sucks. But like, yeah, reaching out to them is not going to help i mean it will help you it would help you there's so many cases in my life where like i sent the text where i'm like damn i shouldn't have done that (laughs) like and it makes you feel worse afterwards where you're like i should not have texted them i know the only thing that like i could kind of think of that like is like a soft thing that you could do is like reply to an instagram story or like depending on like how you know yeah how long has it been how or like long? reply to a snapchat if you're like on snapchat together but like i wouldn't like go like hard i wouldn't like ask why no no i think it's just i also think like there's there's such a difference between like i've like thought about this before because i think there's a huge difference between like the energy that you put behind some of those messages so like for example the instagram story reply like if you're replying like in desperation like you're yeah. trying to think of something to reply to the story that will get with, them to reply that will back. Get, <laughs> reply to you like that's not the energy that you want to do that in so like mm-hmm. if it's like a funny thing or like something that you guys mentioned or something together like then reply to the story but like yeah. don't like go into the energy like i need to do this in order to like get closure or hear from them type of thing yeah which sounds like you're in that other mindset yeah but unfortunately that just sucks and yeah they're mean and gotta move on your time honestly yeah no imagine your husband ghosting you don't want that have you ever ghosted anyone yeah you have right yeah i feel like you've talked about it on the podcast maybe yeah i definitely have i would ghost people i feel like if i was dating i wouldn't ghost someone that i've like been on multiple dates yeah Yeah. i would just be like it's not the vibe um but that sucks so much when you like think that they were feeling it too yeah actually i had a guy who reached out to me like a year after we had stopped talking a year (laughs) i feel like it was like a year what did he say maybe six months and he like said like i just had thought i had a really good connection with you and i just i don't remember it was like covid and he said something about like i don't know we don't know where what's gonna happen to the world <laughs> let's oh. make babies so while I we can <laughs> needed to reach out and tell you oh so yeah interesting yeah me texting everyone in 2012 when the world was <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, how to enjoy social media but not get sucked into consumerism. Don't know. Sick of <laughs> seeing so many influencers push product after product and I 
like quote unquote you need xyz product we were just talking about tiktok shop Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah i feel like if there's somebody who's like continuously posting those sort of you know product focused things Mm -hmm. you should just mute them or unfollow them and use the like tiktok not interested button there's like also i just saw this on tiktok i might be butchering it a little bit but like you can go and like filter out that's what it said yeah the word yeah tiktok shop and like it won't show you as many posts like that so like obviously that would help reduce a lot of those ones on like tiktok but you could probably also search like uh like filter out tiktok made me buy it that's a popular like hashtag or like amazon finds Mm -hmm. yeah that'll probably like get a lot of those out of the yeah i think this comes in like twofold because one it's like about the type of person you follow like if it's their job if they're an influencer they're gonna be sharing products unfortunately (laughs) that's just the way that it is so i would be like in my mind i like following people where they don't where I don't feel like I need to buy it, where they're not yeah. forcing me to yeah. be like, you need this in your life or like, yeah. please buy this and support me. It's more you're following them because you want to get just ideas of things yeah. that you might also like and get recommendations for things, but not like you need to buy any of it. But then I also think there's the side of consumerism where it's not even people selling things. It's just seeing everybody's life yeah. and then feeling like you need to that buy it. That is interesting. Yeah, I think that's kind of. I a think big part. I've I've almost had that more. Same. Yeah, me too. Then I've had people be like, "Oh, you need to buy this." Same. Like, yes. Oh my god, I love her life. There's this one girl on TikTok. I found her on TikTok. I also follow her on Instagram. She has this like East Coast aesthetic lifestyle, like Ooh. marble countertops, like marble black splash, like Cute. just like oh my god, everything about her life. I'm like, I want all of this. Yeah. Like this has to be me uh-huh. and, and that can be partly good like, because you like want to manifest yeah. your life to be like that and you might get inspiration to do your kitchen like that and whatnot sure. but like you don't want to feel like but you she's need like to not have that. she's not pushing anything yeah like i'm she's just, just like, living her life yeah i'm just like damn. it's just kind of like a self re- self-reflection you problem where it's like i don't need to buy every single thing that i see yeah. other people have on social media it also kind of reminds me of like being in middle school and high school and like when certain makeup products or certain clothing or whatever would Mm -hmm. be popular and my parents spoiled the heck out of me where i thought i wanted drunk elephant i was getting Mm -hmm. drunk elephant Mm -hmm. and urban decay and benefit all these like popular things yeah but now as an adult with my own money i'm like there's a lot of popular makeup products where i'm like i'm not gonna spend the money on that and i feel i do feel the need sometimes where i'm like oh i should have that everybody's using that like everybody has that bronzer everybody has that lip product yeah everyone should have the summer fridays lip balm (laughs) camera did buy it for my birthday but it's still sold out did he buy it from i told him to get it from sephora not amazon because you said it was more expensive on amazon oh yeah it is um one of my friends bought it on like directly from summer fridays i was like wow you're so smart <laughs> wow i know I, didn't think I know i know i said the same thing i was like i feel so <laughs> stupid right now oh interesting <laughs> yeah um but you're always gonna feel that way like oh yeah, this kid has the new iphone that. this kid doesn't have a phone whatever like it's just your Everybody whole life has will be a that filtered way. shower head i need a filtered <laughs> yeah. shower head like yeah and kind of that's sometimes where i just need to turn off my phone and just go outside and mm-hmm. talk to my real life friends and talk to like people in person and just mm-hmm. kind of recenter yourself and be like, oh, the internet is like a gigantic space. Like you're entering so many countries and cities and, and people's homes. Yeah. Wait, there was something. Oh, also just to like r- circle back to the alcohol question. I know that was like a couple questions ago. <laughs> um, Kelly posted in the facebook group so if you're not part of the facebook group obviously go join that um you can like submit your questions if you just like want to chat with the community yeah we talk um, about the episodes and, we, and like, stuff after chat in there too but kelly shared her experience of like i think she's been not drinking for like a year now um they started with like marathon training like not drinking so she might also be a really good person to ask and just mm-hmm. like talk more about super curious things yeah that'd be great um uh, and follow people maybe like find other like maybe look up hashtag sober curious or something and follow some people yeah um i've been looking for a side hustle for so long outside of my nine to five job 
I kind I feel like I've tried everything from an Etsy shop with my knitting projects, survey mm-hmm. games online, which gets you nothing. LOL. I've d- even decided to try sports betting with my husband every now and then just for extra <laughs> side cash. That. Have any of you had a side hustle before? And if so, how did it go? How would you recommend I find something sustainable and that works for me? I feel like side hustles are so hard because like you see them advertised of like, yeah. like I made an Etsy shop. I'm selling these templates. I do no work and yeah. I'm bringing in 30 K per month. Like yeah. there's so many things that you see like that or sports betting or whatever. And then you're like, yeah. Oh, I can do that. Well also that's like MLM thing. <laughs> yeah. Too. Yeah. yeah. Not, try joining an MLM. Maybe. <laughs> no, please don't. <laughs> what are the good MLMs these days? There's no good MLMs. <laughs> I do actually like that state MLM. Who? It's like a makeup. It's like the one where you like paint your face. Huh? I don't know. I just like the community people. Let me try that. I've never heard of it. Yeah. It's just like this. It's like this makeup tin that you put like. I'm not part of it. I just really like the. (laughs) She's just a seller. (laughs) I'm like. You have a car like branded. (laughs) Surprise guys. Did Um, you ever watch the Lula Road documentary? Yes. That was wild. So fucking crazy. Yeah. I. I can't remember. Was it like a long time ago that it came out? Uh, a few years. I feel like yeah. we talked about this I think on the pod. So, probably. I think so. Yeah. That was pretty crazy. Um, But like you can just like put your, you buy these like different makeup tins and then they're like. Oh, I've seen that. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like color match, I think is like what they, they advertise it as. Okay. Like, yeah. yeah. I think so I know let me know if you want to be color match. Anyways, I like their community. Jackie Richards is um, one of the sellers that I really like. <laughs> I oh literally God. never bought it. I just like her. Okay, um, <laughs> I do like watching them. Like if, I do. Sometimes if a TikTok live pops amazing. up of an MLM girl selling stuff, I'm like, I'll, I'll tune in for a sec. I I don't know. Anyways, I like that one. But um, I think it really depends on like what you are interested and excited yeah. about because it's again it's a side hustle. So like remember you're doing your nine to five job. So you want to be able to like enjoy to some degree what you're doing as a side hustle because if you don't then it then you're like you know mm-hmm. and how much hours a week time you have for it or want to put into it yeah i also think there's no like such thing as like a quick fix quick money anything like that like yeah anything that is advertised to you is that like is probably a scam and it's like worth putting in the effort to build it and like actually put forth your your like time into it to like make it happen do you know like a lot of those ones where it's like a template like sell this template blah 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 i made 50k this month that is an mlm not all of it sometimes they'll do it like where then that person buys their own kit and then they sell the same thing to say i made this much money even if they didn't make that money they're saying like i can make that money oh so that seems a little suspicious yeah Obviously, all of us have done content creation. Mm-hmm. Me and Dev both did it part time, like side hustle. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I was doing it part time, <laughs> but you also like made it so that it's your career, which yeah, is yeah, really yeah. cool. But like, you're not gonna make a full time money immediately. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't think with any side hustle you have to grow it. You can't. Yeah, it's like you're not gonna be rich overnight with anything. Yeah, but there's so many things like there's like secret shoppers. There's a lot of online things where you can like edit. What is it called? Yeah, there is actually a lot. So like even if you don't want to do direct content creation, like there's a lot of like editing jobs, copywriting jobs, VA jobs. Yeah. Yeah. Like called me and Cameron used to do this in college. It was like it's through Amazon. I think it's called like tinctures. Amazon tink. Oh, I have to look it up. I'll put it in the Facebook group or something if I find it. But it's like activities and it'll be like complete this activity will pay you three dollars or something. You and it's like a really plasma. quick editing thing. <laughs> she said surveying games online, which is not helping. Oh, surveys slash games. Yeah. Not surveys though. It's like you're like editing things. I don't know. They're not that expensive. Or I think people um get paid really good money to transcribe or like to write the text Mm -hmm. audio what is it captions for like tv shows and movies but also like babysitting pet sitting like so many other service type things yeah walking dogs um someone just said please always keep your movie and book recommendations coming 
We just recorded an episode on that. So if you have not, I think we did like our 2023 book in review. So go listen to it if you haven't yet. Yeah. There's also um, teaching English online in foreign countries. <laughs> but, but you stay in America and then you teach it online. That is a thing I know. I've heard a few people doing that. Be a sugar baby. Selfie pigs. Yeah. Only fans. <laughs> To each his own. Um, <laughs> I've never really been a motivated kind of person. I love a Me? quiet, introverted life, but I'm frustrated that I can't stay insular. I don't know what that word means. I Wait, very I thought staying look- insular was like... I don't know. Look it up. Everyone asks what you've been up to. What's new? Even on Monday, people ask, what did you do at the weekend? What are you going to do this weekend? The answer is nothing for everything. I just feel judged and this is impacting on my thoughts on future as in career. I don't want, I don't want one. I'm not the career minded person, but all I seem to do is work and I hate it. I work most of the time and don't make much. I'm stuck and fed up. Really don't know what's best for me and feel governed by my lack of salary. Any advice? Relatable. Insular means ignorant or uninterested in cultures, ideas, or peoples outside of one's own experience. Mm. I hate this. I like even on my birthday, like we we went out to brunch and the waitress is like, What are all your big birthday plans? And I'm like, This is it. (laughs) The brunch was the plan. (laughs) The problem is the people who's all always asking these fucking questions it's like (laughs) we don't have to be doing a bunch of shit and they're just trying to be nice and customer servicey like they're not they don't care what your plans are society is conditioned to ask these questions and i I do feel like it's also worse when it's like co-workers Mm -hmm. and like people kind of like in your life that are like and it's repeated every monday yeah like like, oh what you do this week and then you're like feeling like oh this whole month i've told them i've done nothing from like this hell of a week like yeah yeah that's what i was doing this weekend um i definitely i feel like it's really easy to get into this like cycle though this like mind this like this feeling of like repetition because if there's nothing to look forward to and there's nothing to kind of like change up the pace of what you're doing Mm -hmm. then it just kind of keeps coming into this like cyclical thing and it's like a negative feedback loop that you're constantly going into and so i don't know like what source of things could like spark a change in this person's life but I feel like there could be something that's like a change and it doesn't have to be like doing an activity. Like you don't have to like go and like start taking up running or something. Like you mm-hmm. could do something just for yourself and like focusing on more things that are like for you. Like you started coloring more mm-hmm. and that's like something that you enjoy doing like in your yeah. free time versus like, I feel like if you were constantly like, Oh my God, woe is me. Like I'm always alone. Like this is, I'm really pathetic for this type mm-hmm. of thing. Like, you would just constantly be in that feedback loop and just yes. be like really bummed out about it. But like you've changed kind of the narrative of like how you're going to spend your time. Yeah. And so I think that's like figure out something that you can like change. Yeah, I agree. Um, I just really relate also to the motivation part and like not knowing exactly what you want to do and feeling like there's like a million things. Cameron sent me this reel the other day because <laughs> he's not, he doesn't send TikToks. He's, that is freaking real. <laughs> um, but it says, I told my psychologist once that I'm sad because I can't decide what I really want for my life. And he replied, maybe this is you. A person who continuously creates his life, likes to experience new things and does what he wants. This sounds like a beautiful life to me. And I was like, oh, shit. That's I really love beautiful. that. The other thing that just reminded me of, like, I would almost get your human design chart read. Oh, yeah. We because it could, like, that. it could, like, inform you a lot about just, like, how you are as a person. Like, for me... I'm a manifesting generator. And so like I'm constantly fueled by like new ideas and like new, like just changing things up for myself. Yeah. Find what and, motivates you. Yeah. And, like I have new things that motivate me and new things that excite me and like going after those things are what give me joy and excitement and more motivation. But there's like people that have different cyclical things that are just, they're not they're They don't run that way, but like society often rewards those people that are kind of coming up with the yeah ideas. that's all we are ever hearing from are the go-getters yeah. in society but yeah the big the 
mass percentage of the population are not like that. No. Most people just want to do their job, go home, and they're not trying to achieve these big, huge goals all the time. Yeah, like, that's just true. Yeah. Be happy and enjoy. Being happy is have. hard enough. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It's a full-time job to try to be happy. Yeah. I also think that the unmotivatedness, I do think like when I'm more depressed or in larger time chunks of depression i'm like yeah. whoa i've been really unmotivated for like yeah. months where that's yeah. when i know it's bad yeah versus like maybe like a few days i'm not motivated yeah it could be good to talk to like a psychiatrist too just to yeah. see like if there is and it, do it doesn't mean like if you start medication or like talking to somebody that you're gonna feel this like spark of motivation but like maybe you'll want to do just stuff for you like mm -hmm. just having like movie nights at home or yeah just it also sounds like adhd a little to me or maybe i'm just like that's what mine is like but for me it's like i don't have motivation until i suddenly have motivation yeah like how right now Brittany just showed me a lot of like how to organize my whole freaking business on ClickUp and like taught me so many things and i felt so like i feel so motivated yeah. now to go back home and do that but like sometimes that motivation is not there i also think that motivation is kind of like a fluke and like it's yeah. not something you can rely on which is yeah the sometimes you have to deals. just yeah, yeah start doing it yeah my 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 thing is not like you're not trying to go get motivated yeah. but you want to like change the cycle of like i just not feeling like good mm -hmm. i think a lot of that has to do with the mindset because that that's how i felt all the time too and i mean also i'm very passionate about sharing stuff on social media like that's what gets me excited yeah. but like changing the mindset around not doing anything and being happy with it or fine with it it's like been such a game changer in my head i also have to say too i feel like there's it's really underestimated who's in your corner like i think like just the simple change up of this month for you like it's a drastically different outlook on mm -hmm. your business and like mm -hmm. next steps yeah so like having the right people in your corner and supporting you and like that's either in business or just like in your life. Like you have supportive friends that are like, Hey, yeah, go take your weekend alone. Like go fucking mm -hmm. like have yeah. so much fun. Yeah. That's a different mindset than like, Oh boo. Like you're so boring. Like, yeah. why aren't you coming out? Like, yeah. Get rid of those people. I also think it's being confident and talking about the things that you're doing, just chilling at home. Like I would, I'm very comfortable when my friends ask me, what did you do this weekend? I say like, Oh, <laughs> I watched this documentary on Netflix. Yeah. I read this book. I, took the dogs on a walk like yeah. it doesn't have to be i went to this party and i went to this other event and yeah. stuff you could talk like people are interested to hear about a recommendation of a show yeah. that you're watching or something yeah my sister is dating a guy that i find obnoxious and rude but unfortunately she doesn't <laughs> see it and she really wants us to get along how do i deal with this that's fucking hard dude uh, i don't think you can that sucks like you have to let her see it i think yeah i would let them see it i would not I would even maybe go harder of like trying to be supportive almost like and being nice around him and yeah. being like yeah yourself. yeah because if you're mean or rude around him then your sister is just gonna push you away and he's gonna turn on you and be like your sister's such a bitch you know, yeah yeah, blah, blah, yeah. Blah. The, that's so true yeah <laughs> like you do not want to do that and then you're not gonna then he's then you're both not gonna like each other even more yeah you, you just gotta stick it that. out uh and try or to, you could plan to mindset, trap like <laughs> get him to do something that's so raven on him <laughs> um but yeah i think that's fully something that other people have to come to terms with unfortunately and then just being there to support them after the fact but it is hard like some people i know people whose family members get married to people that they don't like and that's their whole life forever they're not going to leave the person because their family yeah. hates them then you kind of have to find the attributes that you do like about that person too yeah, that's hard or even like activities you that you like to do with them because i think like if you're doing stuff where like you have to really just be with that personality yeah. versus like sometimes Go see a doing, movie. yeah going to see a movie <laughs> <laughs> or like just certain activities <laughs> where like they can have fun and you guys don't have to necessarily like interact the whole time yeah unless he talks through the whole movie <laughs> in the theater oh my god <laughs> that, would, and he that, would, leave. that would hopefully make the sister come to her realizations mm -hmm. yeah i'm 30 years old and have never had a boyfriend or gone on a date terrified to put myself out there and go on a date 
I feel so awkward around guys. Any advice? You should watch Love on the Spectrum. <laughs> that show is like so motivating to me. Uh, you, like if you is? see these people that are pushing themselves to go on dates <laughs> that have like a challenge <laughs> socializing. You can't say what? Oh. I'm not bored. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, you just have to you just have to push yourself to do it. Otherwise, nothing's ever going to change. Unfortunately, it's like everything else where the longer you go without doing it, the scarier it's yeah, going to build up in your mind more and more and more and more. Like you don't even know what a date is at this point. You only have built up this yeah. like scariest possible scenario in your mind. Could you maybe have like a friend hangout or something? Would that be weird? Like maybe ask like a... Yeah. Like, ask a guy to hang out as just friends and that kind of be an opening. I almost feel like, if depending on, like, if you've never gone on a date or had a boyfriend or, like, even had, like, a thing with a guy, I might even, like, say just start going on apps and just, like, getting them the practice going of talking Yeah, guys. talking. Like, you're, you're not even, like, trying to go on the date yet. You're mm-hmm. just, like, just start talking to them. Having yeah. conversations. Yeah. Practice. And you have to kind of look at it look at it as practice or an experiment like take the pressure off of it do it for the plot because when you start learning how to do anything you're always bad at it you know it yeah. takes practice and time to get good at things so yeah my favorite part of love on the spectrum in the second season when connor's talking to his mom and he's like and princess diana you know what happened to her and his mom's like connor we're not the royal family <laughs> yeah i remember that because he's so freaking out but i really related to when he had the panic attack and went outside um oh, they yeah. did like a speed dating event which we just answered speed dating <gasps> i hope we get an update from the person who went to speed dating we need to do that we need to somehow find them and ask them yeah but he went to the speed dating event and he ended up having a panic attack at one point but uh, yeah i think that just shows everybody has to put themselves out there and mm-hmm. everything's scary yeah that's what i mean by the show is motivating because you're seeing these people do things that are so outside of their comfort zone like so outside of it and sometimes it ends really well and when it doesn't end really well it's like not a big deal either yeah because like even if they have the worst date they still go home and they had an experience and it's fine like, yeah they learned from it i really can't help that i've been on one date that I wasn't my boyfriend, so I would be really yeah. terrified to go on a date. Sometimes you said nerves are good. They're like little butterflies of excitement. Yeah, that's true. I feel like you also, like, I feel like you've talked about how you kind of made it, like, fun always. Like, getting ready for the day, maybe having a drink and, like, yeah. listening to music and... Going to a place that you feel comfortable and excited oh. to go to. <gasps> yeah. Have you guys seen that restaurants like people will go on a dating app they'll go to meet the person at the restaurant and then the person never shows up and it turns out that the restaurant is making dating profiles to stand people <gasps> up so that way they spend money at the restaurant are you kidding it's <laughs> insane is that That's crazy so fucked. what I restaurant hate that. is this it's multiple restaurants yeah no it's like i've seen like six different tiktok videos about it that sounds like a major waste of time to yeah. get like one person into your restaurant. Yeah, and also I wouldn't stay necessarily. I'd probably no, have a I'd drink probably, first like, and then be like, okay, I'm, yeah, how about that one drink. That's so weird. Um, my long term partner, whom I adore, has been very drunk a lot lately. Okay, let me just try this again. My long term partner, whom I adore, has been very drunk a lot lately, and as a health court, well. <laughs> My long-term partner, <laughs> whom I adore, has been very drunk a lot lately. And as a healthcare worker, it feels like managing another patient when I get home. Mm. He's been with me through the hardest parts of my life, and now his dad is dying, but he won't put the down in the bottle. Our relationship has been suffering as a result, and so has my mental health. And I am I the asshole for fully losing my shit? No. No. Definitely not no. an asshole. That just makes you really sad, though. Yeah, yeah. that is really it's like his dad's tough. dying, too. That's like, I feel unqualified to. I know, I don't, I really don't know what to say to that. I think with guys, it can be really hard for them to like manage their emotions Mm -hmm. and like know what to do with them. Because like as girls, like 
we talk about everything. Mm -hmm. Like we just have an outlet and like, I'm sure that you're an outlet for your partner, but like at the same time, it's probably so different than like if he's like annoyed with somebody at work or something like that, Mm -hmm. you know, like it's, it's a lot harder Mm -hmm. to like navigate the emotions and know how to express them. And like, especially if you're in a resentful place where you're both kind of resenting each other, like you won't be able to communicate the same way. Yeah. I, yeah, I just really feel for this situation because I think it's like a really difficult thing. And it's definitely not your responsibility as a healthcare right. worker to come home and have to care for a drunk person, clean them up, or put them to bed, deal with yeah. the shit they're saying, and all. That's yeah. not your responsibility whatsoever. But that's so fucking hard. I have no idea. Because it's like we talk about sobriety if it's the person has to make the decision almost. Yeah. Like you can't really yeah. do anything. I feel like trying to be like able to open up the conversation a little bit more and yeah. like get him in a place where he can be like a little bit more comfortable just like sharing his feelings. And, you know, sometimes I think driving is a really good place to do this because you're not like in this serious, like in front of you conversation. You know what I mean? Like yeah, you're you not like look looking into each other's eyes. Like you're Damn. just kind of like, yeah, you're both kind of like focused on something else. That's really true though. Cause I wasn't thinking that because she probably has spoken to him several times about the drinking of like, why are you doing this? Please stop, blah, blah, blah. But maybe approaching it as his feelings rather yeah. than even mentioning the drinking maybe would like yeah hit him more. Yeah, helping him get into a better mindset as just opposed like to helping his him feelings. Because maybe he wants help also. Maybe he is too scared to ask for help or maybe yeah. he just feels so stuck right now. And I'm sure with his dad dying, that's really sad and yeah, an extra challenging time. Yeah, for sure. And also, I would ask, like, has he always been like this? Like she said more recently, like, is yeah. this a pattern of behavior? Does he have addiction in his family? Yeah, and like, if so, do you want to live your life that way? Because yeah. yeah. you can't, at the end of the day, fix someone's problems like that. No. So yeah. sometimes you have to, like, put yourself first yeah, in those really situations. True. Damn, we but we're me. all unqualified, so. <laughs> yeah, fuck. That's really hard. Okay. Okay. Um, puppy advice. After what feels like it, like endless law. Well, maybe this was episode is done. Uh, puppy advice. After what feels like endless logistical and emotional preparation, my new puppy is so much more work than I thought they would be. I love her endlessly, but I find myself crying pretty much daily. I guess I'm looking for anything that could give me hope, helpful advice for not letting my pup get me down most days. She's a baby and is doing her best. I just don't feel like I am. Puppy blues Aww. are rough and the biting, barking, potty training, et cetera, is taking a lot out of me. We feel you, girly. That's yeah. the puppy blues. It's basically Those postpartum. The yeah, it is. And then you forget rough. about it after they grow up. You, yeah. yeah. Okay. The light at the end of the, the tunnel puppy. is there. Yeah. Finley was a demon puppy and I would pay all of my money to go back to him being a puppy and experience him shitting everywhere and biting me and chewing everything up in our house. Yeah. But at the time, I was crying every day and it felt horrible and felt like... And that's the thing is you feel like you're not doing good enough, Mm -hmm. but look at your puppy and your puppy is very happy. Mm -hmm. So you're just putting that pressure on yourself. I feel like if you have the means to get help and hire a trainer because... I think that should be included in everybody's budget when getting a dog. For sure. But it's okay if you didn't budget for it because... Yeah, no judgment. Yeah. <laughs> like that shit is expensive. I didn't budget for it. I no. thought it would be like a, like just we could do a pet co class or yeah, something. No. Yeah. I think like private training is like the best if you can do it. Um there are obviously like group training classes too. It's a little bit less individualized, but I think it's really helpful to have like the reason why I like the uh, private training is cuz like the trainer is really training you yeah, how to like that's train what I was your dog. Gonna say. So like that's kind of like the most important thing i think because and once you find a place and people that you trust then it's like you can go to them for everything like we've just found a place that we love and there's like several employees that work there that love our dogs and now if i'm having an issue one because like you're saying they teach you what to do so if i'm having a problem and finley's say barking at squirrels out the window i know the trainer would tell me to shut the windows and not let him 
yep. even see it. I know what the trainer would say mm-hmm. in most situations, but then also like I can just text her too. Sometimes I don't have to like do a full class or anything, yep. but there's so many options. I also think too, depending if you're like on social media, if you're like following accounts that have like angel dogs, like mm-hmm. mute them for yeah. the time being. Also, it's not real. I don't believe any of that. No. I think Except that's- Rosie. Rosie's like better behaved than I ever thought it should be. I feel like she turned a corner this year. She's My so She was sweet. so good, like with the baby. Like, oh, oh I was um, paid to see that. Did you yeah. take videos? I think we have a few, yeah. Oh. She, but like, she was so patient. She like sat there, like, she just like, she gave like little licks um, a little <laughs> bit. Oh, but like, she so was cute. so, so gentle with the baby. It was like she knew. But I will say four, like three to four yeah. is like the difference. Like once they get closer to four, it's like they're more yeah. a full adult. I also think take time for yourself. Separate yeah. yourself from the dog. Like Have if you're, boundaries and don't feel bad about it. Yeah. If you're in an apartment, like figure out like how you can give yourself some time and space from the dog. Like yeah. if you're in a house, like give crate time. Start doing crate training so that you can like do time apart from your dog and you feel bad about it like i work i was doing college in an apartment when we first had finley and like i felt bad because i was like well i'm home i can be watching him he doesn't need to be in a crate eight Mm -hmm. hours a day but they do both for their own structure and their own yeah thriving and then also to let you thrive yeah yeah um how would you respond to a narcissist in a work setting our sales guy at work has gotten so bad. I can't be in the same room as him always talking about his ideas and his experience and reacting the same quotes. I don't know what that means, but um, I do social media. So sometimes our jobs cross over, but I might reach a breaking point. He brings everyone down. This is a really tough situation. Yeah. Distance yourself as, as much, much as, as possible. possible. Jinx. yeah i just always with people like that when i'm in a scenario like that i'm just like what and then afterwards like communicating to somebody else that's logical like wait did we just both see that yeah, or something that sure. can make you feel better it's I hard with think- narcissists because they will not stop talking to you and you can't it's like hard to get out of those situations and conversations like yeah to walk up just but just walk away honestly they'll keep talking if you have like <laughs> you're just manager, still going <laughs> if you have like a manager or like somebody who has like a position where they like give that person feedback mm. like usually those type of people like want a gold star kind of thing mm. so like if they can get feedback from management that can make a difference but like you want to be solution oriented when you give feedback like that you don't want to be like He's such a narcissist and is always sharing ideas and blah, blah, blah. Because, like, depending on, like, the manager situation, they might be, like, enjoying the fact that he gives ideas and stuff. Like, that's rewarded a lot of the time. So I think that if you can be, like, share constructive criticism and some solutions of, like, how you guys could, like, work together better or the space that you guys get from each other, um, then it could be beneficial. Especially if it's like an open floor plan or something. Like, I worked in a place with like cubicles, so like we didn't have like our own. It's kind of cool. We didn't have I always like, like wanted a little cubicle. But like from from like an ADD girly that like oh, gets yeah. distracted were by everything, like- <laughs> it was like really hard to concentrate when there was like people that were like trying to talk to me. Yeah, mm-hmm. and just like people always kind of coming up to my desk, like mm-hmm. yeah, and I would just want to chit chat. So there's like a lot of things I was trying to do to like put space between me and me. Yeah, can you put like headphones in or something like be like i'm yeah. doing something but I'm it depends on right like now. the scenario i think it's good because then he could get feedback from mm-hmm. the other people yeah everybody probably knows everybody yeah. else is annoyed by the same person yeah like, whenever i've had somebody that's annoying at work like we all the other employees talk about it yeah so. Um, my face breaks out so bad when I'm stressed, even on my nose. Can you give some advice? A nose it is the worst. I've yeah. gotten that. That sucks. I hate it. Um, I feel like everyone kind of has a little bit of different things for their skin. Mm-hmm. I think for breakouts, depending on like the cycle of them, I like a benzoyl peroxide. 
or a salicylic acid and a sulfur treatment by face reality and like just rotate those every night and moisturize so that your skin can repair itself until it's gone i think if you can afford it i think it's worth it to see a dermatologist about your skin concerns because everybody's face is so different I spent so much time trying to like fix my face yeah. with like products and mm -hmm. foods and stuff like that. And like overall just seeing a dermatologist was the most helpful for me. Yeah. Did your insurance cover it? Mm -hmm. I also think um, going to see like med spas too. I found more success with a med spa than a yeah. dermatologist. Um, because sometimes dermatologists prescribe like band-aid type treatments where like it you, it's not like a long-term effect mm. which really sucks because like you cure your face and then you like have to go off of the products they recommend and then you're like fuck this so like med spa treatments like chemical peels like lights lasers there's all sorts of things that's that, a lot more expensive though. yeah that's yeah. like but like i would have done anything to have learned about a med spa sooner because I also do hear people difference. say like investing in that, then you're not spending as much on makeup or like yeah, on or other like, things. Like that just you feeling like shit about yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's like plastic surgery. Like if you would feel way better about yourself, mm -hmm, it's yeah. worth it. Worth the money. But also you said that it's stress acne. So like, if you know that also maybe focusing on your stress mm -hmm. yeah. could help get an aura ring. who <laughs> has been tracking them stress. Yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't help me lessen my stress. <laughs> Yeah, like if you, you like see that you're stressed today, it's like okay, cool, <laughs> cool, it's gonna continue till tomorrow. Now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> last year I was deciding between moving to New York City and going to a grad program there in person, or buying a house and staying where I live now, Salt Lake City, Utah, and doing an online grad program. I work remotely, so either place is fine. I got into both programs, but ended up staying in Utah because an old townhouse became came on the market. I bid low and somehow got it. That's amazing. Um, fast forward a year later and I kind of feel like I had an opportunity to move out on my own with my dog. All my family lives fairly close by in Utah and moving would have been exciting and new. Buying a house was objectively a smarter choice, but I'm 28 and I have no commitment. So probably don't need to do the smarter choice every time. Well, I recognize Love that. I'm, yeah. <laughs> well, I recognize I'm lucky that I bought a house and could be in that position. I'm starting to think about selling it taking probably a loss overall and just moving away. It feels dumb, but is that okay? Should I stay here and enjoy the fact that I bought a house? Some considerations. It's just me and my dog. I'm single. I'm in my online program and work remotely, so I'm not tied down anywhere. I could sell and take a loss and move, but I also took advantage of being a first-time homebuyer, so wouldn't be able to do that if I wanted to buy in the future. I'd either move to New York City alone, one friend I know lives there, maybe we'd room, or Portland, Oregon, where my remote company You want to stay is. with me? <laughs> yeah. Um, I know it's time to move out, but it doesn't matter. Advice. I Sounds like this. you want to move, girly. That's yeah, all I'll say. Yeah, sounds like you're going to move. <laughs> I, I bought a house, a condo in Chicago. Oh, yeah. Wait, this is literally you. Yeah. This is my question. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I was like, wait, this is <laughs> you no. included the part. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was in a different market. So Did I you take a loss? loss? That's no, what I was going to say. I got money. Well, I'm just thinking right now, but like, should she have a, because I don't think that we would even have a loss if we sold our house right now. Bought, like if you bought last year, it's like the market was higher and the market's lower now. But could she maybe like rent out her house? If you could do that. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Like, could you rent it or... But you, depending on your mortgage. Especially if you're going to New York, that's going to be very pricey. Yeah. Maybe Portland would be better than... I don't yeah. know how expensive Portland is, but... Also pricey. Go to Vancouver, Washington, across the river. It's where I live. It's a lot cheaper. And then you can just drive into Portland yeah. 10 minutes away. I would say that, like, I wanted to move. Like, I was, like, really, really excited to move. I had friends. I had, like, things going on there. I had a job. And my heart was like so set on moving and like, of course I would have wanted to keep my condo if I could and like mm -hmm. rent it out and stuff. But like, I'm so happy I sold it and then bought this house mm -hmm. instead. Yeah. So I think it's like location and like, you can always move back. Like, 
obviously there's like different strategies for like selling the house and whatever but like i think if you can if you can rent it out great and make money on it try that or sell it and move and live your best life and then you can always move back yeah it sounds like you might regret not moving not trying to live in a different state and yeah, like like a dumb with a rental it. like could she say her mortgage is two thousand dollars yeah. could she rent it for three thousand and yeah. then have a thousand towards her rent in new york or wherever yeah yeah depending on what her mortgage payment is yeah i mean sure. rent is fucking high everywhere every too. renter Wait. is putting their mortgage way higher um the other thing is i think like when you have this like excitement and there's like energy you're not always gonna like be excited to like move and like just jump ship and do something else and do something new so i think you should like take advantage of that mindset and that opportunity like yeah in that excitement like in your life yeah i mean the large part of you being yeah. single and not tied down just having your dog and everything it's very much like now's the time like you said you don't always have to make the smart decision right now and you will later in life so like why not and sometimes you have to take a loss like mm -hmm. with a lot of things in life there's where yeah. you'll have to take a loss and it can be worth it for more happiness for sure and more experience in life yeah and it'll like help you grow yeah mm -hmm. and you can always go back mm -hmm. yeah you sounds like you got a support system back in utah so you know something to fall back on if something happens yeah i think it, yeah it's probably scary the thought of buying the next house is probably what's like the scariest part i live alone and work from home i also don't have a lot of friends in town as i recently moved here i have been thinking about getting a dog for a year already but always feel like it's not the right time i don't know enough i don't have enough money i don't have a car though i live in europe and you can easily live without a car here i'm getting obsessed with watching dog content training breeds food but I am taking a lot of time usually when making an important decision and hesitating constantly. How do you know when you're ready for a dog? Will you ever be ready? Or am I just overthinking everything? I think the, like they said in Europe, I since being on Instagram and dog Instagram, it's crazy how much I've learned about the difference between dog ownership in Europe or here. Like people don't understand that our dogs go to the bathroom in the backyard. Like, so many people are like, you don't take them on a walk every time they need to go to the bathroom. I'm like, no, <laughs> they just poop in the yard. Yeah. But to them, they call it their garden. They're like, wait, you let your dog go in the garden? Yeah, that's <laughs> Like, really there's funny. so many things like that. But I would say it's most important is time and money, probably. Yeah. yeah. I have, like, money for vet bills, money for training, money for the food you want food. to feed your dog. Um. And so looking into like, that ahead of time, because yeah, like, like food of we all have switched to a more expensive food yeah. Yeah. than we started with as puppies. So yeah. looking into yeah. all of those options and deciding what you'd want to feed medicine, there's flea and tick yeah. shit, there's vet. So, so I think like having like three, three ish months, at least three to six months of savings for the dog would be good in addition to the like cost of the dog. Yeah. I mean, I also definitely did not have that. I was 21 in, Me in college, yeah. so I saved the $2,000 for Finley and probably had just enough income to know that it would be fine. I think I did the same thing, and I don't think there's ever a perfect time. There's never mm -mm. going to be the right perfect time. I mean, yeah, if you could save money before, that'd be great, but... Definitely yeah. get insurance right away, though, because that will help like yeah. vet fees and everything and then also um a support system of knowing because yeah. your life will change of like you just going out to do things or even going out to dinner even and then vacations and all of that like yeah. having somebody to watch them or just knowing that you'll maybe have to come home from things early for sure which i, I love doing it could be <laughs> yeah. a really great time like a way to meet friends yeah and like connect with people because you just like move there like Rosie has made us so many friends. It's the like, ultimate yeah. conversation starter. Conversation starter. Like, it just icebreaker, lightens the mood. And it's a, yeah, it's fully a conversation then to talk about. Like, yeah. when people don't know what to talk about with me, they talk about Finley and Sadie. Oh, for sure. <laughs> I'm like, I'll talk about them forever. And yeah. you can, like, do dog meetups and, like, all yeah. sorts of different dog And I feel walks. like Europe has such cool, I don't know, they yeah. seem so much, like, more dog friendly. For sure. So do it.
Yeah. I mean, <laughs> make sure you have enough money. That's oh yeah. Yeah. And time. Yeah. Yeah. But there's never going to be a perfect time. So if you are obsessed and you want a companion yeah. and yeah, I mean, start. Don't get too obsessed with all the it. stuff that you're watching on Instagram of feeling like yeah. you need to do all of it. For yeah. sure. There's a lot of stuff. Well, I mean, I did that too and it worked out. So what? I mean, I was obsessed with all the things. Corgi. Just like all the things that I needed to be doing for Willow and buying. And I like, mean, yeah, I guess I did. The she same needs thing. this bandana and I need to teach, learn how to trim her nails. And I need oh to like. God, the bandanas. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I haven't bought a bandana in yeah, probably same. four years, three yeah, years. <laughs> That's crazy. You don't need any of that stuff. But <laughs> you if you do get obsessed, I was also. Yeah. Or you just build the collection. I think it's <laughs> nice to see the, to do like dog trimming and stuff on your own because that obviously saves money. Mm hmm. But yeah, but it's so diff like there's so many different opinions of even training and stuff of what the heck to follow. Yeah. And breeds. Breeds I is a actually huge do thing. think there's one thing for breeding or for breeds is like making sure you get a breed that's compatible with you and your lifestyle. Yes. Because yeah. like I didn't really, you know, there's like different types of goldens. Like there's like field goldens that are a lot more active and crazy. I did not know that about and goldens. Like I'm like, oh my God, they're so cute. But like I don't think we do enough activities like we do me and joe do activities but like not all of them that we'd take rosie so like you know yeah she's a better dog for us i did not know that about goldens until yeah. instagram same i thought they were all the same <laughs> same good show. also it's um a lot of it about like these working breeds or just these more intense breeds it's not always about the exercise because that's also what i thought is like oh you just do two ox or like go on a run or whatever and then they're good yeah. but a lot of it is the mental stimulation like 100 percent, 15 minutes of training makes them more tired than a 30 minute walk yeah. yeah for sure yeah okay well thank you so much for submitting your questions you can leave them in our google form whenever you would like we already have more, apparently. So I know we're gonna have to we'll do, do another, another episode. episode. Maybe this will be for our community or like our membership. Yes, we're really working hard on that right now, guys. So we'll come to you soon with an exact date. Maybe by the time this episode comes out, we'll have a date. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube, and you can listen to us wherever you listen to podcasts every Tuesday. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.
this so around. What, you want to go to bed? No, it's like the, the second one's at 8.45. It's not that late, but yeah. Uh.